All right. Good evening, everyone. Okay, if you can hear my voice clearly, can you type MU in the chat? Okay, MU is not my Chrome, but market updates. <laughs> Good to see every single one of you. Now, let me just make sure everybody. Okay, fantastic. I can see Kelvin is here. Xiu Hui is here. Good to see. Okay, fantastic. Michael, wow, wow, wow. So, love to, so lovely to see every single one of you. All right, so let me just uh, meet everybody so that everyone is able to join us for this very, very insightful market update. Okay, how many of you are excited? Excited for that. If you're excited, can you type E in the chat? All right, because today is not just me. All right, I will definitely be sharing from my point of view how I analyze the market. But at the same time, I'm also inviting an economy expert to be here, and he will definitely be giving you a lot of insightful uh, data points as well as how you should be navigating in this market condition. Okay, I can see many of you are very excited. So now I'm going to share my screen and uh let me know okay let me just share the entire thing first then to make sure that you guys can see my slides if you can see my slides can you help me to type s in the chat are you guys able to see my slides clearly perfect all right, fantastic. Thanks, everybody. Now, let's get started for our market update for the month. So, I always like to do uh, what we did previously so that you can have a very quick glimpse through of what happened previously and how has the market evolved until this point, right? So, previously, when we last did our market update that was back in early August, all right, I think it's on uh, 12th of August, if I'm not wrong. So, the data point that I captured was basically in early August. And previously, the market was pretty choppy, right? It was a lot of uncertainty. The market actually dropped quite a fair bit when we covered that. And uh, at that time, if you still remember, Amazon was down like 16% and NVIDIA was down 25%. So, and during that period of time, right, the market was actually extreme fear how many of you still remember that if you can remember that can you type e in the chat okay e stands for extreme fear it was extreme fear if you want to have a quick update previously you can go to my youtube channel to check out the previous market update but this is exactly what happened back then it was extreme fear at that time and so many stock stocks exact uh extremely the uh, especially the tech stock actually dropped so much so guys do you anyone did anyone remember what did i share during that time so during extreme fearful time like that, during then, what should we be doing as investors? Anyone remember? What did we cover previously? During extreme fearful time, you should be, you should be, exactly <laughs> you should be greedy okay not nothing huh? okay you gotta take some form of action because the market was actually giving you some form of opportunities all right so if you still remember back then all right i actually shared that hey this is the best time to really look into some of the very very stable etf right and in fact i also shared it inside my own private etf community as well i shared with them exactly what i bought during those extreme fearful time because the market is giving giving you a discount, right? Isn't it the best time to start accumulating more? And for those who are completely new to investing, that was actually the best time to get started as well, right? So then after that, the market has actually gone up since then, right? Because once again, there is no uh, bear market forever. There's no extreme uh, fear forever. The market will always start to like change in terms of directions. So what happened back then uh, in the past one month, basically the market has actually gone up. So if you look at the S&P 500, which is the US broad market itself, it's gone up 7%, all right? So if you took action, how many of you took action since my last market update? If you took action, can you type A in the chat? Okay, how many of you took action that you actually seize the opportunity? Right, together. <laughs> All right, I love that. Michael took that. All right. Okay, Kelvin, you're waiting for the crash. I think sometimes, right, don't try to just keep on waiting because you really don't know when is the crash going to come, right? So you always want to make sure you just take some form of action whenever the market is giving you some form of opportunities. So I'm very happy that many of you actually took some action. Fantastic, right? And many tech stocks not fully recovered yet. Exactly. Okay, this is something very interesting. While the broad market has actually recovered, right? In fact, to right now, all-time high again, if you look at some individual stocks, 
For example, uh, NVIDIA, which is a screenshot I showed you just now, it went down that, and then it went up, right? It went up 19%. And then with the recent volatility once again, it came back down, right? So right now, if you compare to the previous market update, it, it still went up, right? It went up about 6%, but not as high as it, the, the, previous, uh, the previous 19%, right? And the same thing happening to Apple as well, right? Even though it went up, but then it came down again. So it went up about 4%. So uh, if you look at it this way, S&P 500 versus NVIDIA versus Apple, actually SPY has the highest gain, <laughs> the most predictable gain, despite of all those uncertainty out there, right? So that's why I always feel that if you are someone completely new to investing, or you are someone that you really don't want to monitor individual stocks, what is the best way to invest? Guys, can you tell me? If you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to monitor individual stocks, what should you do? Exactly, <laughs> you should look at the ET wave, the Aliagato way of investing, which is just use ETF, right? Like no brainer, so simple, so easy, and then just over time the market will recover, will go up. And yeah, another stock that I talked about during my previous market update was Berkshire Hathaway, and just like what KK said, it has gone up a lot right really really up right so make sure when the market gives you opportunities seize it right take some form of action you don't have to be very aggressive just a little bit give yourself more confidence to get started okay so can everybody type s in the chat okay s stands for started right just get started in whatever way that you can and you will be rewarded over time and the best way to get started is always etf investing in my opinion all right so yeah so that's exactly what we went through previous month so that was a very quick recap so right now right how about the market right now what is the situation in fact how many of you have actually monitored what happened to the fed's decision okay if you know what happened can you type me in the chat okay if you know what happened because they were this meeting was a highly anticipated meeting everybody in the market investors like you and me professional investors fund managers they are all looking at this right oh yeah fantastic i can see many of you actually stay up with the fed's announcement i love that so what happened was right it was a jumbo size cut. <laughs> what do I mean by a jumbo size rate cut? People were expecting, right, either the rates to be either saying the same or uh, like a small cut, like 0 0.25, right? But this time was actually a 0 0.5 point cut right 20 basically it's a 50 50 basis point cut and you can see that right for the u.s interest rate it has been hovering at a pretty high point since 2022 right because dur during covid time the interest rate was almost zero right because the the government really want to make sure there is a lot of liquidity in the market so that it can boost the economy. But because of that, right, there was a period of time that we went through high inflation. And to counter this high inflationary environment, the US government started to increase interest rate, right? Since like 2022, they have been increasingly uh, adding on the rates so that to curb inflation. And for the longest time, right, our interest rate, okay, for the US has been staying up from like here all the way here. It's about 5.5%, right? This was actually considered pretty high as compared to what happened like 10 years uh, uh, in the past 10 years, right? And then finally, there is this turning point. Ding! It happened here, right? So it, there's a drop and right now it dropped to 5%. Right. So basically the range was 4.75% to 5%. And uh the Fed also and like predicted or anticipated that there could be more rate cut coming. So this is what we are waiting as well. So the thing is, right, what does that actually mean? For me, right, I'm not a micro, I'm not a macro economy person. So that's why tonight I'm also inviting these very, very lovely gentlemen. His name is Ethan, right? Yesterday actually was his birthday. Then we went out to have a birthday celebration and he was sharing with me how excited he was towards uh, Fed's upcoming announcement. And he shared with me some amazing insights, which I thought that, it's something very, very useful. And that's why today I purposely invite him to be here as well to share with you guys his insights as well. All right, how many of you are excited about 
the market insights from Ethan. If you're excited, can you type E in the chat? All right. So, oh, KK is super excited. Like, hello, Ethan. Wow, I love that. I love that. So many people are excited to learn from Ethan. So the thing is, before I bring up this special guest, right, I also have have to do my own form of sharing right, so that I can add value to you as well. So that I can share with you my insights and you can use it as your form of reference. Okay. So now, first thing first, right? Before we look at interest rate and all this, let's just look at the overall broad market in terms of the valuation. And one of the indicator that you can always reference on is the buffer indicator. Can everybody type BI in the chat? Okay, BI stands for buffer indicator. And the buffer indicator basically is a formula using the total US stock market value, right? Divide by the GDP of the US. So if the buffer indicator is very big, for example, right now is 200%, that means the US stock market value is almost two times, all right, two times of the GDP, which shows that doesn't even make sense, right? The GDP is only so much, but the market, the cap, the market cap, right? The total market cap is actually double of the GDP. It doesn't seem to be making sense. And that's why, according to Buffer Indicator, this was actually strongly overvalued. Now, some of you may be thinking, okay, Chloe, okay, I understand this, but the data point seems a little bit outdated because it was dated back in June 30th, 2024, which is almost three months ago. Okay, how many of you felt that it's a little bit outdated? If you felt so, can you type O in the chat? A little bit, right? So now, the thing is, yeah. Yeah, it's a three months old data. But I think one thing that you can always reference on is how has the market evolved since June 30th, right? So if you still remember right now, right, the, the market valuation uh, based on buffer indicator, it's all the way here. Okay, you can see historically, it's the gray line, right? Historical trend line, that means this is so considered fair value. But when it goes above like plus one, this is plus one standard deviation means slightly overvalued to plus two, which is extremely overvalued, which is right now where we are right now, right? So the thing is, uh, is this data point even uh, accurate right now? So what I did was I basically look into the market situation plus the market price since June 30th. So if you still remember, all right, June 30th is around this point, okay? I actually draw out already for you. So at that time, the market price was about uh, just the S&P 500, right? Which the overall US broad market, $554, right? And right now, uh, actually the market has already gone up close to 3.66% since then, right? And previously, if you still remember, during our August or uh, market update, the market actually dropped compared to June. So and that's why at that time I said that the valuation might not be so overvalued right now because the market price actually dropped from the previous high, right? But right now, not only did the market recover, it actually went all the way up as well. So based on this, right? it can give us a good reference that if back in June at this price was already pretty overvalued, not to mention right now, right? it should be actually even more overvalued than June data point. How many of you understand the logic? If you understand, can you type U in the chat? Okay, U stands for understand. Fantastic. Okay, so this is based on buffer indicator. Now, also let's take a look at the PE ratio of the S&P 500, which is uh, one of the ratio that broadly used by investors uh, throughout different parts of the world, right? So as you can see, PE stands for price, which is the overall market price, right? Divide by the earnings of the company, which right now, uh, if you're talking about S&P 500, then will be the overall S&P 500, right? divide by the overall earnings of those 500 company, right? So as you can see, based on this, we are also at a pretty high point, right? At about 30 times, okay? It's close to 30 times. And you can see that previously, uh, there was a period of time that during about COVID-19 period, 
right? It went up above the close to like 35 times. Then the market started to drop, right? And of course, during this period of time that was super crazy during the 2008 financial crisis, it shoot up all the way to somewhere that it's off chart, right? So that's how the market also started to drop. So right now, I would say that uh, it's definitely not cheap at all because we are at 30 times. Usually above 30 is considered pretty expensive. So uh, we are definitely not cheap. And based on this, okay, we have another data point, right? And then if you look at the fear and greed index, previously it was here, remember, right? Extreme fear, it has come to this region where investors actually start to become greedy. So guys, can you tell me when investors out there are greedy, what should you be? What emotion should you be feeling? What should you be doing? Yes, it should be the opposite, right? That's how we become contrarian. And we do something that most people don't do, right? When people are very scared, actually that is the best time to buy, which has happened previously over here as well. And right now, when people become very greedy, you have to be more careful, right? You don't want to be jumping onto the bandwagon and just start to buy for, for no reason, right? Together with everyone, right? That's the whole, whole point, right? So, and on top of that, if you look at the Buffett cash holding, it's almost at all-time high. Now, this is a chart that I find it's pretty interesting because you can see that Buffett's cash holding used to be pretty high, right? Uh, over 50% during which period of time, right? During before the 08 crisis, right? As you can see, before the 08, uh, Buffett felt that there was nothing to buy because the market was overvalued and that's why he held on a lot of cash. And when the OA financial crisis actually came, when the market start to tumble down, you can see that Buffett's cash holdings start to drop a lot, right? Because he saw that the market was severely undervalued Then he bought and bought and bought, right? And right now, what happened was uh, with the market for the past 10 years continue to evolve like that, roughly his uh, cash holding was hovering about 25% point around here, right? You can see, right? Roughly in uh, like, like, uh, up and down from about 25%. So how about now? It has actually gone up from 25% all the way to 44%, which was actually very near to the historical high mark. So guys, what do you think? What emotion is uh, Buffett feeling right now? What emotion is Buffett feeling right now? Is he... <laughs> then you say run <laughs> nice time to take profits yeah indeed actually Buffett took some very good profits right if you watch our previous market update he sold a lot of his apple steak almost half of his apple steaks right now are gone he took a lot of profit he also uh sold quite a lot of BAC so net seller uh, for the past six months right and he only bought a little bit right? Uh, Alta Beauty and all this, right? But just a little bit. But overall, he's net seller. And that's why he actually has more cash than ever, right? So guys, what's your take? Do you think right now uh, you should be aggressive or you should be more conservative? What do you think? You should be aggressive type A. You should think that you should be conservative type C, right? Very good. I love that. Okay. So this is how, right? We learn from this session, right? It's not that I want to give you the answer. I want you to go through this entire session with me so that you learn to make better decisions for yourself, right? How many of you felt that whatever things that we went through just now was useful for you? If it's useful, can you type useful in the chat, right? So very importantly, as an investor, we want to cultivate independent thinking and that's how we are going through this together. Very good. I love that. Okay, so now let's continue. Huh? So the thing is, moving forward, what's happening right now, right? With the market actually at a very, very high valuation uh, period and we should be conservative. So what does Fed's announcement mean, right? How would that actually impact the market? And that is why right now, I also want to invite Ethan to be here, right? In fact, Ethan has been doing this market update with me for a couple of months, right? <laughs> Since we started. And every single time he gave a lot of very, very useful insights to all our students, all our uh, audience here. And right now, I want to once again invite him to be here to share with you more insights, okay? So if you guys are excited to once again welcome Ethan, 
Can you type CCC in the chat? Okay, CCC stands for clapping for Ethan for taking your time to be here. Thank you once again for being here as well, Ethan. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you for having me back. How are you guys? Hope everyone's doing well. <laughs> got a very nice surprise by Mr. J. Powell, and I'm so excited that we get to talk about it. Awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited. Before I let you guys come in, he was already very excited to share all his uh, slides with me. And then I can see his uh, passion, right? And his insights from, from the sharing. So right now, I want to pass the time to you. Thank you, Chloe. Okay, so today I want to be able to dive a bit more deeper into what Jerome Powell has said because it's quite a lot of things to unpack from just one meeting. Uh, yes, he has actually lowered it by 0 0.5. However, there are a lot of things that are happening in the background. So part one of my conversation, we are going to talk about the economic update. Why is the FOMC important, especially for, my, uh, for us in Singapore? Because it actually affects our interest rate very directly. Uh, as you can see, MAS gives out control over domestic interest rates and domestic interest rates have typically been below US interest rates. If you look at this data, and this is a data set over the last 19 years, about 4,000 over lines of data, there has been 94.47% correlation over the last 19 years. All right. And then this is the latest banger that Mr. Jerome Power has dropped. And let me break it down to you guys uh, part by part. The most important thing is that number one, they have cut rates by 0 0.5 from an effective interest rate of 5.33 to now at 4.83 effective, okay? And then they are also planning, as you can see over here in the in their projections, they are also planning for one more cut for it to go down from 4.83 to 4.53, uh, somewhere there, all right? They're gonna do another 25 point cut. Then after that, uh, they also has revised down the future projections from, uh, 4.1, they say that now we are not going to keep interest rates so high for so long, down to 4.3, which is wonderful because there will be more money in the market. Money becomes cheaper when interest rates fall. And when it's easier to borrow, big organizations will borrow more and um, have a little bit more leverage with uh, their operations. You mean they project to cut to 3.4, right? From 4.1 to 3.4. Correct. Okay. Correct. So from 4.4, the last last time when they were actually saying, right, they were saying they're going to cut uh, to 4.1. Remember you and I, when we were talking, I was telling you, likely they will cut the, the behind. However, mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether they will cut the actual front rate. And Jerome Power has decided to surprise everybody and take a very aggressive stance. Later, I can I will I will talk to you about uh what's going on in the uh question and answers. I also I watch through everything so that you guys don't have to, right? <laughs> you, it should be your tagline. I watch yeah. through <laughs> Fed meeting so you don't have to. <laughs> no, it is it is uh it is work, but it's interesting lah. Other people got K drama. I have Jerome Powell. <laughs> so. That being said, I want to let you guys know on the current value. This is the same, this is the very same um slide, but I want to let you guys know about the current value and then so that we can understand the economy as a whole and where is it going, especially when you guys uh utilize tools such as the buffer indicator that actually tracks uh the GDP mm -hmm. uh of the country. Currently, right, right now the GDP growth are year on year is actually at three percent. That is a lot higher than their June projection and their current projection. They are intending for our G the GDP growth to taper down to 2%, but current value is 3%. Unemployment is the thing that they look at. They, they have a few focus uh, in the Fed. One is unemployment. Make sure that there are as little unemployment as possible. 3 plus 4% is happy for them. Mm. Uh, Inflation over here, they are aiming for 2%. Okay, So this is the inflation right now, 2.5. But later you will see that there are actually two types of inflation. PCE inflation includes uh, volatile food and energy. This is uh, exacerbated by the Ukraine, uh, all the different wars that are happening and uh, supply chain issues. 
the P the core PCE is after they remove the volatile food and energy. So from there we can also tell a story. We can understand the story of the economy when uh we look at the numbers. Okay. Uh and these three are the things that they are looking at. So let's look at it. In okay, so I'm very curious. So the PC uh, right now with the so-called the more volatile uh price fluctuation like energy and all this is actually lower than core PCE. Mm, so correct. So the thing is their PCE inflation, right? This is inclusive of food and energy. Uh, they're expecting it to actually taper down a little bit. Uh, they're expecting it to go from 2.5 to go down some more to 2.3. Mm. Whereas... For their core PCE, they expect it to maintain, which tells us one thing, that the Federal Reserve believe that the food and energy prices may be coming down. Mm, yeah. And, yeah, and uh, currently the unemployment is 4.2. They expect it to go up a little. Later, there, are, there will be the reasons why, uh, that, why they have decided to push down. And currently, right, because of uh, all of this information, right, the Federal Reserve, they study all of this information to then decide what to do on the federal funds rate. And they have a process. Uh, uh, Jerome Powell and his entourage of uh, 11 people will sit inside the meeting room and talk for two days and then cast their vote. At this point of time, the, the market is at 5.33. And at this point of time, everybody over here has said that, okay, we want to lower it to 4.87. We want to lower it to 4.6. We want to lower it to 4.4, which mm. is why we saw the data over here, the 4.4 over here. When mm. you look at the 4.4, right? Correct. When you look at these numbers, right? Majority wins. At this point of time, they have nine people aiming for um, this rate, which is why uh, everybody decided to go towards that rate. However, once again, uh, past, uh, they take their decisions meeting by meeting, which is um which is more apparent because when the data come out, then you can react on what to do to make sure that uh your dual man mandate is um is accomplished. And speaking of dual mandate, remember we were talking a lot about inflation, inflation, inflation. In fact, in the whole year of twenty twenty four, I believe, uh, we said inflation or at least two thousand and twenty four times. So, <laughs> inflation has always been the keyword of uh, the Federal Reserve. So, let's take a look at it. What Jerome Powell say, right, is that they want to see the trend of the inflation coming down, moving downwards towards the 2% line. We look at the data for the last five data, okay? Uh, last five uh, numbers. Number one, it was, uh, we look at this, it starts out with, 2.7, 2.7, then 2.6, then 2.5, 2.5. Yes, for PCE, we can actually see that the downtrend is quite strong. There is uh, there is one additional uh, step and then it is moving down. Whereas, when you're looking at the PCE excluding food and energy, right? It's 2.8, then 2.8, then drop down to 2.6, then 2.6, then 2.6. So, the chart resembles a step down rather than a downward trend. But mm. this may be me nitpicking. Lah. All right. So uh, it does not show too much of a trend going down. However, when you look into the questions and answer of um, the Jerome Powell's uh, recent uh, announcement, this is when you see uh, this, this man, uh, Steve Leisman, he actually started asking, hey, uh, in July you say, you're not going to drop 0.5, then what happened today? <laughs> How come it's dropped to 0.5? Uh, dropped by 0.5. And then he says, uh, the, the reason why they want to cut is an, a commitment to the public not to get behind. They, they want to be ahead of the curve rather than behind the curve. They want to be a bit more ahead rather than behind. So they want the, the inflation rate to be down, but they want their interest rate to drop also. Uh, mm. One other, and this has been uh, made, to, made known to them because of two employment uh, reports and two inflation reports from the last meeting until today. And another report from the GCEW suggests uh, that the payroll numbers are artificially high, which means the unemployment numbers 
are actually lower than what they actually are. So the unemployment number of 4.2 over here is actually much higher. So that said, right, uh, that's why they actually projected their unemployment rate over here to be at 4.4%. I apologize, uh, it's a little bit messy. Wait, uh, so, so they say it's artificially high. That means it's actually not so high, right? Yes, correct. So it is uh, artificially higher. So the jobs report is artificially higher. So the unemployment is... Uh, the jobs is artificially higher. Which uh. means the unemployment is artificially lower. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> I see. That's why they put the behind as 4.4%. Alright? Mm. So... Uh -huh. What I feel over here, right, uh, is that uh, they also have data from the Beach Book, which is a book uh, that the Federal Reserve have access to, but not us. Lah, all right. So my thoughts over here uh, is that the Federal Reserve has always operated in a dual mandate system. So their, their two job is maximum employment and stable prices. Right now, they feel that the stable prices is kind of sort of on track towards their 2% goal. And that's why they want to be ahead of the curve by cutting the interest rates now so that they make sure that the unemployment do not raise up to an unexpected, unreasonable level. Mm. Personally, personally, it's personal opinion. Uh, my outlook in the economy is quite rosy. Number one, GDP growth is going quite well. Uh, number two, interest rates are coming down. Number three, um, inflation is a lot better than last year where we have 4% inflation. Right now, only 26 mm. But my biggest fear over here is that if inflation were to creep back up, guys, uh, everybody, I would like to ask you guys, if inflation creeps back up, we see next report, we see inflation come in. Instead of 2.6, 2.4, we straight away see a 3% inflation. Type in the chat, what do you think Jerome Powell is going to do? Raise rates for R, and then uh, R for raise rates, L for lower rates, S for stay. Okay, so out of these three, I, want, I wonder what do you guys think? Okay, wonderful. I love this. We are having a lot of varied response. Okay, beautiful. Rate hikes again. Kaboom. R, 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 S, S, L. Lower. S, S, S. Stay, stay, stay. Ah, crash. Kaboom. Okay, everybody. Everybody knows that this is a problem. When inflation comes back up, right? Uh, and then they stay, uh, they leave the inflation there, right? What happens uh, is that inflation... People no longer believe the Federal Reserve has a control on inflation. So there's a, a lot of runoff effect. I tell you, this is a TT. You wouldn't want to kiss Jerome Powell then. But then, right, everybody will hate Jerome Powell. And that's why, like what I say, uh, it is a very brave move for them to cut. But it is one that I respect because they actually, they actually love the people. They actually want the unemployment not to be too high because if the unemployment goes too high, we have a problem once again. Okay. So at this point in time, I, I think that everything looks great so far. However, got a little bit of a fear. So later we can talk a bit about what to choose between fixed and floating rate and uh, whether um, interest rates are going to go up, go down, and what should you even do with your mortgage. With Arigato Investor, you guys are making a lot of money. But right now, I want to do the more boring task of helping you save a few tens of thousands of dollars. So, yeah, let's do it. At this point of time, Toby, I'd like to, I'd like to hear your thoughts as well after, after hearing my uh, presentation for the second time. Wow, guys. How many of you felt that it was very insightful for you? It was insightful. Can you type I in the chat? Okay, to me, I learned a lot. Wow, I learned, I learned to look at so many different data points that I personally wouldn't behavioral to have the knowledge but because Ethan he watched the fe uh, federal fund uh, fund rate meeting so that you don't have to <laughs> that's, why, that's why we are here thank you so much Ethan and thank very you. very factful I love that all right so if we just continue to look at some of additional data points that 
Eden has shared just now. Uh, if you see, uh, let's look at the inflation rate, right? So as Eden sh uh, shared, right, the reason why the Fed had actually this bold move of uh, cutting by uh, a jumbo jumbo cut, right, 0 0.5, is because it does look like our inflation rate has been tempering down, right? Like been coming down, coming down, coming down. And right now we are about at about 2.5%. So then if you look at the inflation rate, okay, this is inflation rate, yeah? So if you look at the unemployment rate, it has been uh, slowly creeping up. So I think that is why uh, the, the Fed was concerned about this and they wanted to be more, I think, forward-looking to cut rate first to uh, spur up the economy even more, all right? having more liquidity, having uh, lower borrowing costs. Then the companies are able to employ more people if the business does well. So, but just like what Ethan said, there is a lot of uh, tricky sentiment, right? Because... If the inflation does come back up, that's when uh, the market right now is being greedy. But just a slight tinge of um, uncertainty will really send the market to the other direction, right? So uh, that's why yesterday after uh, Fed actually made this bold uh, move, the market actually didn't go up immediately. It was actually like hovering and then actually dropped a little bit. But some of you have been monitoring the market. <laughs> the market right now, the pre-market is actually going up. So once again, the, the greed mentality is there. Right? And that's why generally people will be uh, very, very greedy right now to want to buy more. And I, I think that probably there will be some uh, price movement going up from there. But if you look at generally, right, some of the indicators that we can see together. So, uh, okay, I'm just going to look at the overall broad market, right? So if you look at the overall broad market, Right now, uh, guys, if you just look at the support and resistance, can you tell me whether is it at support or is it at resistance? Okay, so for those who know what is support and resistance, can you tell me whether is it at support or is it at resistance? Yeah, exactly. All right. So uh, if you don't know, it's okay. All right. Uh, you just uh, basically, this is basically technical analysis. You need to look at the chart and then you just draw out why are the high points and where are the low points, right? And as you can see, all right, this channel based on this, actually, it, it seems to be touching the resistance. And in fact, if you look at, you draw another horizontal line, this is basically the, uh, the all-time high uh, resistance line as well. So it does look extended. And that's why I felt that the market is also thinking about, oh, whether should they, uh, like, oh, does it make sense that if they keep on buying or if they anticipate the market to drop, then maybe the there will be pullback from there, right? And if you look at another indicators, uh, recently the Safe Investor actually came up with this indicator, which I thought that was quite useful for me, right? So I actually been looking at it as well. Let me just remove all the drawing. And if you look at the green and red arrows, right? So basically the green arrows are the points that it's good to buy, right? Because uh, the market is actually giving you better opportunities, cheaper opportunities. So you can, you can see here, right? If the green arrow come up here, you buy. And then if you want to do short-term trading, like you can sell uh, on the red arrow, right? But this is what you can do. But for myself, I'm a more like a long-term investor. I usually don't like to buy, like buy and sell, buy and sell, that kind of thing. So what I usually do is I like to just do dollar cost averaging over a long time, right? So that's how we can use ETF, like a simple ETF strategy, like S&P 500 to compound our wealth. So what you can do is you can also use the indicator to just buy uh, and not sell, right? So for example, you can buy here. And then after that, when a green arrow happens here, you can buy here. And then of course, when the market comes down, you can also use the green arrow to have a better certainty to average down at a better point, right? For example, here, here, and here. Right, so if you've been doing that, right, during the the green arrow happens, that's how overall in the long run, right, uh, you are going to make profits in a more profitable manner, right? S and P five hundred is going to give you profit regardless in the long run, but you can do this by increasing your ROI further, and that is for the green arrow side. However, if you're doing long, like more short-term kind of trades, be it is it like buying and selling uh, stocks, right? Or whether is it through buying and selling away your options contract, then you can see that the red arrow actually appeared uh, recently here, 
right? So if you bought a call option here, and then after that, okay, from here, you go up here, which is about 4% 4, 4 right? 4 to 5% in terms of uh, the stocks, then call options are usually three times or even sometimes four times, right? So that you, that's how you can see like a 20% or so kind of uh, return. Then you should be closing your options because the red arrow actually happens. So that's what I did yesterday. I went to actually close my options contract so that I uh, can take profit early, right? Now, having said that, no indicator is ever perfect. Who knows, right? Because the market is very greedy. Maybe from then a couple may go up, right? It's also possible. But I think there's always no harm taking the profits early. Then you sh you always ensure that you are making profits instead of uh, when the market turns, then you end up um, facing losses, especially for options. It's very volatile and it's a lot more tricky because there's time decay and everything, especially if you're buying options. All right. So what is this indicator use? So this indicator is developed by the safe investor, right? He basically came up the script by himself. So there's uh, different indicators that he combined together. I personally uh, do not know the intricacy of it because he is the one who developed it, but I find it very useful. So I've been using it. Yeah, option 360 uh, indicator, right? So that's why right now for myself, I am still more conservative because the red arrow comes out. And on top of that, just like what we saw just now, the technical analysis, just based on the support and resistance, it's also at the resistance level, right? So how many of you understand my logic, right? If you understand my logic, can you type C in the chat, okay? C stands for conservative. Why I'm taking a more conservative stance than being aggressive, right? Because of different data points from not just the technical analysis point of view that you are looking at, but also the valuation of the market, which you have seen already, right? There are different uh, multiple valuation uh, methods that we look at. It's all overvalued and you do not want to be overly aggressive during this period of time. So I think it's actually good to actually take some profits off the table so that to ensure that you are a profitable and safe in this period of time, right? So the key question is then, then what should we be doing right now? So firstly, right? It doesn't mean that if the market is overvalued like right now, that you should be completely exiting, okay? We don't we don't mean that. Because if you look at Buffett, did he 100% exit? No, right? He is still 50% invested. It's about then about 40 plus percent cash, right? So uh, Buffett doesn't time the market. So if the greatest investor on earth, he's not timing the market, why should we? Right, so we should still stay invested, and I think you should be using Buffett way of uh investing as a reference. Fifty percent invested, fifty percent cash. Can everybody type fifty fifty in the chat? Right, so this has not changed since our previous market update. So it's always good to be conservative, especially when the market it's not cheap. All right, very good. And then secondly, very importantly, is like what I said, you should take some profits. <laughs> if you're already making pretty good profits from your, your options trade, especially those short-term trades, you should just uh, take some profits. And for those who are holding onto stocks, you can also consider to sell some options to collect some income, right? So this is what I shared to my private ETF community yesterday that I said that, hey guys, I'm actually now selling some options so that I can collect some additional income. And at the same time, I don't mind my uh, shares to be called away, right? Because I already have quite a huge position. So at the end of the day, it's always about balancing your uh, investment needs, right? Depending on do you want to have income? Do you want to unlock more cash flow? Or do you want to actually gain back your, your whatever capital? Because when you actually do sell call options, you can potentially gain back your capital and you can redeploy it. So this is what I personally do for my own uh, portfolio as well. Right. So now, of course, on top of that, very importantly, is when it comes to interest rate going down from now on, right, in general, it's actually good for the market. So that's why in the long run, when you continue to stay invested, regardless of the interest rate environment, you will be OK. Right. And another instrument that you should be looking at uh, when the interest rate actually comes down is actually start with. P, okay, guys, anybody can, can you let me know what is the, the instrument that you should be looking at when the interest rate temper down? Okay, what is that in, uh, uh, what is the instrument? Start with P, yeah? Make a guess. Exactly, very good. Okay, oh, you are correct, all right? That is property. Because when interest rate comes down, 
your mortgage, everything will become a lot more affordable to buy. So that's how uh, it's also easier for you to finance your own mortgage. It's also easier for you to enter into the property market. So I started my property investment journey three years ago, about three years ago. And then I bought my first uh, private condo, right? So for those who have been following me, you know exactly what is my property investing journey as well. Uh, if you're keen, you can go and watch my YouTube video and do a house tour. <laughs> now I already rented out this, uh, this uh, unit to my tenant. And I'm very happy because I get to collect cash flow. Now, uh, the thing is, it wasn't like rosy all the time, right? Because uh, property market, okay, firstly, why do I buy? It's because in general, the property market goes up, right? Just like the stock market, especially when you are holding long enough, it's a very, very powerful instrument that you can leverage on because literally property allow you to leverage, right? So that's how I actually started to diversify part of my investment capital to from stocks to property just to have a different layer of safety. Right, so this is the SG property market price. In the long run, it's very obvious it goes up, right? So then the thing is, uh, when I tenanted it out, okay, initially it wasn't very, very pleasant because my cash flow wasn't positive, right? Why? Because at that time the interest rate was very, very high, right? which uh, if, if you guys still remember, right, the interest rates start to hike and all this. And because my, it's a newly developed condo, I couldn't fix my rate previously. So it was a floating interest rate. And because of that, my rate was super high. I have to pay like $4,000 for mortgage every single month. So the thing is, then how much do I collect from my mortgage? My mortgage was 3,008. So if you think about it, net, net, I'm still losing 3,008 minus 4,000, 4, uh, I was actually losing $200 in terms of cash flow. But that is more to it. There's more to it. Because on top of the cash flow being negative, I still have to pay other things, right? Including the maintenance fee, the property tax and everything. So net net, actually, my cash flow situation was actually negative $750. And it was not a very pleasant experience because you buy property, right? thinking that you can unlock cash flow and that's why I buy, but end up, it turned out to be the otherwise, right? So I was very disheartened at first until I met Ethan, right? Because Ethan, he literally helped me to just change my entire cash flow situation. Uh, because of him, I managed to refinance my uh, property, right? And I fixed it at a much, much lower rate than the floating interest rate back then, right? So in the end, my installment monthly mortgage become $2,300. And then if you think about it, right? I add back in the mortgage from 4,000, uh, dropped to 2,003, right? And then with all those maintenance fee and property tax, I and still cash flow positive. And it become like $900 every single month in terms of positive cash flow. And if you add from negative all the way to positive, uh, from negative 750 to now positive 900, I literally have $1,600 of net change in cash flow. How many of you think that this is pretty good? If you think this is pretty good, like cash flow is good for you, right? Can you type C in the chat, right? So I think very importantly, <laughs> very smart, right, Ethan? Well, so very importantly as an investor, so you need to constantly think about what is your objective, right? If you're buying this stock for uh, cash flow, then you use different strategies like options or be it, is it dividends. But if you buy it for like, for example, I buy my property also for cash flow game, right? Then it's better for me to be cash flow positive. So that's how I think Ethan has really helped me tremendously in the entire journey. And, and on top of that, right, eventually when I sell off my property, I can also potentially have a good capital gain, right? So that is eventually, and right now I cannot say for sure, but I think uh, since you can look at the property trend in the long run, it goes up, it should be a, a good profit for me in the long run, right? So that's why uh, I want to bring in Ethan here to be here once again right now, because uh, he also wants to share with you exactly what kind of um, property mortgage and refinance or potentially solutions for you if you are probably have the same situation as me you have a property or maybe you already have a property existingly but how can you refinance it better especially with the lowering interest rate environment right so for those who have property this is something very very relevant to you and if you don't have one yet uh use it as a vice so that you know what to do when you are about to buy your property all right so can everybody type 
P in the chat, P stands for property. And without further ado, let's bring back Ethan here to share with us some additional insights. Thank you so very much. Uh, you gave me a very, very easy job. Uh, this job is to sell why is Singapore property good. <laughs> and I think, um, okay, let's talk, let's look at certain facts. Yeah. Uh, Singapore, is it a big or a small country? Everybody. All right. It is 726 kilometer and not all the land we can actually build private property. Right. So small. Yeah. EY says small. Correct. 726 kilometers square. One of the smallest uh, 20 of countries in the world. Okay. As one of the smallest 20 of country in the world, this hum humble red dot is the second busiest shipping port in the entire world, second only to Shanghai. The airport, uh, everybody keep how learning. It is one of the best already. Uh, business environment, best for 15 years. Uh, also, uh, Singapore is sheltered from natural disaster, got political stability, affordable, uh, tiered tax rates, low crime rate, good education system, excellent healthcare. And on top of that, uh, additional buyer stamp duty for foreigners, 60%. So, at this point in time, you have an asset class that is very, very in demand. People want to live in Singapore for the security, for, for everything. And um, everywhere else, if you were to drive a nice car, it is a little bit dangerous. In Singapore, I think it is okay. Uh, you will be able to see like Aston Martins ru running around Singapore. And uh, when they go past, you say thank you for paying super supercar tax. So <laughs> next thing, now what I want to share, right, is our interest rates at this point of time, okay? So let me go over to share my screen, okay? Now I want to share with you guys on the mortgage rates update, what is happening right now, what we can choose, what we should uh, do whether should we go for fixed rate, should we go for floating rate, what is uh, today, Sora, I'm going to go through all of that, okay? So as of um, 18 September, uh, the Sora was 3.45. The one-month average is also 3.45. The three-month Sora, which means the three-month average is 3.55. And our job is to pick between fixed rate or floating rate. We choose the best. I am not allowed to share a lot of uh, too many promotional. Uh, so there are some banks that don't allow me to share certain promotions. And because of that, I can't uh, share certain things. For example, the cashback promo that everyone has been hearing about. I can't say the specific bank because they don't allow. So now if your loan size is $300,000, your fixed rate is two years at 2.9. If your loan size is $500,000, your fixed rate is 2.8. If you are having a loan size of $1 million, your fixed rate is 2.7. Because your loan is bigger, the bank can actually afford to lend you for cheaper. The alternative is the floating rates. And all of them, right, is Sora plus a spread. For the 300K and 500K, no choice. You have to take the three months Sora, the three months average. But for the $1 million, you can choose to take one month Sora or three months Sora. So in an environment, uh, guys, where interest rates are coming down, okay? So your newer data is going to be lower and lower and lower. Do you all want to be assessed by a three-month average, which means it takes a while before your lower interest rates start to reflect, or the one month average where it will be faster, albeit more volatile. Everybody type in which would you want to pick one month or three months? One or three in the in the chat right now. Three, three, one, eight, one, 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 three, one. Okay, wonderful. Three, Michelle, okay. Michael, three, okay. Three, excellent. Okay, so three months does give us stability. However, if it's going down, you want the average to be as small as possible. So you should actually take the one month Sora so that it is an average of 30 data rather than the 90 data. If it's 90 data and then your, your recent data drops, right? It will take a while before, like it will take about 45 days for it to come into the average. Right? So... Uh, I would recommend the one month, but that is only available if you have one million and above. Lah. 
all right? But more importantly, how important it is for us to choose the right rate. As you can see, right, today uh, we talk about $1 million. Just now we said uh, the floating rates, right, is three months SORA. It is SORA plus, three per uh, plus 0 0.4 percent, which will give us 3.85 percent. And if you were to go for the fixed rate, right, you'll be looking at a 2.7 percent for a $1 million loan. Okay. Every month, right, instead of paying $3,000 for your interest, you are paying $2,000. The difference is approximately $950 per month. So you can go on holiday every single month if you got this correct. All right. And then over two years, it is about 20 over 1,000. So this is where we want to make our decision as properly as possible with as much research as possible to then choose the rates that are better for you. Okay. So who are we? We are Unbeatable Mortgage. Uh, we specialize in bank loans. We are one of the few people in Singapore that has a Singapore accredited mortgage planner. Uh, we've got 4.9 stars on Google. We are partnered with all of the banks in Singapore. So if you come to us, uh, we will bring you to every one of them, the ones with the best rate, actually. So we have we have strategies to help you get the best rate with avoiding as much fees as possible. Fees such as like if you were to sell your property during the lock-ins, wow, the fee very expensive, 1.5% of the loan size. Okay, So we have a proven method to be able to help you get the best out of your mortgage, which is our framework of strategy, structure, and rate. Strategy, when you want to sell structure, how you're going to hold and rates what to take. Okay. That being said, let's go into mortgage introduction. For most of you, I believe you all have already heard already, but for the newer comers, I would like to just uh, share with them what I know. So your home loan, you can take up to 75% of your home. All right. And you're able to choose between fixed or floating rates. Your monthly installment, right? For example, just now, Chloe said that her mortgage was $2,350, right? Not everything goes into interest. There is the principal that gets paid down because you pay for your mortgage. And over time, as you slowly pay, your principal goes down, goes down, goes down, goes down, and eventually you own the property in full. And just now, you also hear that her rent is $3,800. So can I ask everybody, do you all want to buy or do you all want to rent? If you want to buy, type B. If you want to rent, type R. Okay? So, this is also one of the only loans that can be paid back by CPF ordinary account. Alright? So, because of that, it's one of the lowest rate possible. Chloe, buy, buy already. <laughs> Michael, buy. Okay. So, who will pay for my service um, for your community, Chloe? I've already said I'm going to let you guys have my service free, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. The, this is the only loan that can be paid back by CPF ordinary account. And because it is one of the more secured loan, the interest rate is one of the lowest. If you minus away inflation, right, it is really lesser than 1%. All right. So at this point of time, so we know that the correlation is 94.47%. 40, what we are going to talk about is some forward-looking statements. So everybody, please, uh, I am just a human like everybody. We cannot uh, look past the fourth dimension of time. We cannot predict the future. But with enough data set, we can try. All right. So what happens is, with that being said, let's talk about my projections. So, right. the, so Ethan, before you talk about projection, right, I think some of our audience are new. Can you explain what is SORA? Okay. SORA is the Singapore Overnight Rate Average, which is a very uh is a very universal rate in Singapore, which is regulated by MAS. There are other rates, there are floating rates out there that are regulated by the bank, but what we want to look at is the MAS regulated rates because it actually is more transparent over here. Okay, so 
Did I answer your question, Chloe? Yes, yes. Excellent. So that being said, uh, currently uh, our effective federal funds rate is 5.33 and uh, our SORA rate is 3.45. As the 5.33 gets cut over at the end of this year to 4.4, we are going to expect SORA to move from 3.45 to 2.85. Okay. So if you were to get a mortgage right now, you should be projecting these rates for your floating rate because in you will only get your loan in about two to three months time. So you will take this as your, your starting range and then um, after interest rates get cut another four more times in 2025, it will once again drop from 2.85 to uh, 2.2. So this is when we can then use this to try to calculate which is better for you. So I've already done the calculations so that you guys are able to see. I have broken them down in terms of um, the current interest rate and you will see uh, 2.92 and 2.44, which are weird numbers, but what they are actually is the average of these two plus the spread. So average plus spread, average plus spread, okay? So year one, what's going to happen? Year one, you will be paying 2.7. If you were to go on the floating rates, you would be paying 2.92. So this is where you actually save approximately 2 grand. 2.1 there about. And on the second year, right, this is when interest rates drop already. The average, right, interest rate at 0.4% spread is 2.44. So year one, you save 2.2 Year two, you have to pay extra 2.6 if you were to pick fixed rate. The difference between them is about $400. Okay? At this point of time, okay? At this point of time, based on these two rates, I know that the premium for the fixed rate is $397. But in this uncertain market, right, I actually think the three four hundred dollars is quite a good price to pay for stability, peace of mind, and if interest rates go up again, we are already locked in. So, Chloe, what do you feel about this? Oh, okay, interesting. So I'm trying to understand your perspective. Mm -hmm. Since, uh, despite the fact that if we fix the rate, right, which is right now at about two point seven, right, for two years, uh, technically, it's a net. $397 uh, so-called pay more as compared to floating, right? If the interest rate does drop. However, if the interest rate actually start to pick up, which could be because the inflation rate environment, inflationary environment is still quite uncertain, you feel that this $400 is worth paying because the premium, it's it's like buying insurance in case uh, actually the insurance uh, in case the insurance needs to kick in, in case the inflation actually pick up and the interest rate instead of dropping actually goes up. Is that what you mean? Mm, or don't drop as fast. A lot of mm. things may happen. I think this is a more like a hedge downside kind of situation. Especially when you're looking at 2.7, you 2.7, you minus 2% for long-term inflation rate. You're mm. looking at 0 0.7. So I think it's, mm. I think, I think it's quite a good deal in my opinion. Uh. Um, but mm -hmm. there are th there are a lot of people with different risk appetite. Uh, there are people who are financial uh, financial minimalists that want to just simply get the fixed rate and be done with it. And some people who are more speculative that wants to go into their floating rate. At this point of time, it is a very interesting time. Like I like I like I said, this is the first time we don't have a very clear answer. Last mm -hmm. last few uh last few projections. The answer was so clear, so the data was quite um concise uh, whether to to go for a fix. But at this point in time, this is where the lines are a little bit blurred. Mm, okay, so then I think we shall also ask our audience. So what would you guys do if you guys were to refinance a property? Or right now, if you are in this situation, would you consider buying this as an insurance, so-called like $397 as an insurance to lock in? Or would you want to take the chance that oh maybe interest rate really can come down that quickly then you actually end up uh saving right so 
LS will take a risk. If you want to take a risk, type R. If you want to be more conservative, type C. Okay, so Katie wants to be conservative. Janet wants to be conservative. Okay, Michael, very good. I think so at the, at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, but I will usually, for myself, uh, because I cannot anticipate interest rate environment as well, I will usually just follow uh, experts' advice. So in this case, if Eden think that it's better to stick on the conservative route, I will generally go with that uh, the conservative route uh, because it, it makes sense to leverage on his own experience. But different people are different as well. Yeah, so I think uh, Eden, uh, at the same time, some people are asking, oh, so how would you get you know get paid for your services since you are already like doing all these calculations for your clients and all this so personally you can think of me as a banker without a bank uh what i do is i do not have any loyalty to the banks i've got 10 of them uh my loyalty is usually to my clients which is why uh i really enjoy my work uh, my clients really they have a nice conversation with me i try to save them as much money as possible and yeah uh, and the bank actually does pay me a referral fee. Uh, they don't pay me as well as they pay their own bankers uh, because their own bankers will have um, a lot more commitment to the bank, whereas I am a free agent. Uh. Uh, so this is how I get paid. Uh, for more complicated cases, normally we do charge for like uh, credit bureau repair and whatsoever. But um, for your community, right? Arigato. Uh, anyone that needs this, come to us and say arigato straight away i will get the code and then i will not charge you guys what i normally do which is a thousand to three thousand dollars for um more complicated service such as credit bureau repair um or or um showing the right documents or a lot of other uh complicated complicated cases, complicated and interesting cases that cannot be publicly shared <laughs> <laughs> I see. I think yeah. people are already saying aligato to you guys. <laughs> you and, and your team, I think like super amazing. Okay, so for those who are wondering how to get in touch with Ethan and his team, who are all very professional to able to help you to look at your financial situation based on your own current mortgage property issues and all this. And if you have some additional complicated things that cannot be simply uh, addressed by most of the banks out there, they can also be there to assist you, right? Because they can really look at the one-to-one case-by-case -one, uh, -case basis. And just like what Ethan said, usually if you have uh, like, like complicated issues like this, it's very difficult for you to already get loans, like mortgage loans out there, but they will be able to assist you, right? So so instead of, uh, generally they do charge because from my understanding, because these require a lot more work, uh, a lot more liaising with the banks and all this, but because you guys are here, right? So that's why I think we should say Aligato to Ethan, right? So that's why he's, he and his team is able to give you this uh, really complimentary and help you to just really unlock more cash flow, uh, refinance, and uh, probably uh, remortgage better as well. So all you need to do, just scan this QR code, and uh, or you can go to rebrand.ly slash unbeatable mortgage, which is actually Eden's uh, company as well, and just fill out the form, right? So submitted the right document. This is where Eden needed. Yeah, exactly. Right. All right. So, uh, yeah. So all you need to do is go there. But let me just quickly share the link as well inside the chat, so that you guys know what exactly are some of the uh information that you need to provide to Ethan via the form first, so that they can assist you better as well. All right. Mm -hmm. So I think one thing amazing about Ethan and uh their team is basically his team is. Like they don't make money from this, right? They don't make money from like consulting you, uh, like like and all this. But the actual thing is, they only will make money if they really manage to successfully help you. I think that is the most imp important thing because the fees are not paid by you. The fees are once they manage to find the best solution for you in terms of refinancing, remor uh, mortgage and everything. They Once they found the best deal, then once you decide to proceed with uh, the recommendation and advice given by them, then the banks are going to pay them 
for their services. So you don't pay any single thing from that. Just like what happened to me back then, I don't pay a single cent to Ethan, right? Because he gave me as a complimentary service. And in return, the banks will reward him for bringing me as a client. And a lot of times, one thing very interesting is if you go to the banks yourself, you will not be able to get the same rate that Ethan and his team is going to get you. Because they have a lot of relationship with the banks, a lot of things that, because he used to be actually from uh, uh, one of the big bank in Singapore, he has worked there for many years, he developed very good relationship with the, the, the banks, right? And that's how when he came up to do this on his own, he has a lot of connection and a lot of uh, better deals than we normal customer who walk into the bank, the bank will not give it to you. Right? So you actually will have more savings when you actually uh, have him and his team to help you. Right? So what you need to do, uh, once you come into the form, just fill up your personal contact information so that they can contact you and do let Ethan and his team know what is your current help that you need, right? Do you need a new loan, a refinance or reprice, right? Or others like complicated issue, uh, uh, please write out here, okay? So that they can prepare better as well. And then basically they will give you a call, right? So make sure you just select the date that you prefer and then what is the preferred time for the call. Then they can jump on the call with you to find out a lot more about your personal uh, uh, situation so that they can see how they can advise you from there. Right. So, yep. Okay. Very good. Any questions regarding uh, Ethan's uh, mortgaging issue? If I have any questions right now, feel free to ask. Okay. Since we still have, I think, actually, we already overrun. Okay. <laughs> but I, we just want to make sure we satisfy everybody's questions as well. Okay. So, feel free to ask it here. Okay. okay. I want to take one question. Uh, yeah. one actually, statement la, by uh, Maslan. Maslan actually talks about the Sora and. um. Yes, it is a benchmark that everybody use and that is uh, one thing that MES use. To share a little bit more, you can actually go into the level of uh, predicting where Sora is going to be for this particular date. Let me share. Uh. Okay. So do you need to overtake my share screen? Yes, please. Okay, can. Let me just unshare first. Okay, oh. there you go. So, yeah, one second. Uh. This one, Salah share. Uh, Oh yeah, correct share. Are you able to see this uh current uh MES slide? MES? Yeah, if you can make it bigger, it would be better. Okay, so this is the MES website for where the interest rates are today. As you can see, right, they already show you only up to 18. Today's interest rate have not been totally out. Okay, so how to predict Sora, right? You actually see how much MES takes for depositing. So if you got extra money. You want to pass to MAS as a establishment, for example, like a bank or something, they will give you the deposit rate. For today, they will give you 3.08. And if you want to borrow from MAS, they will actually be charging you 4.08. So between got one 1% spread. Mm. And if you realize, right, most of the time, the Sora falls in between these two. So this actually helps with, um, this also, it, this actually helps with understanding what's the next number going to be uh next thing is just now when you were talking about the um when i get paid right so i our team only get paid when you get a new loan or you were to refinance to move to a new bank however if you stay within uh, the bank right they this is known as a repricing the reason why i want to show you my reviews page is later you you guys can take a look at it lah Okay, 4.9 style. Can you make it bigger? Yeah, I try. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh. 4.9 style, 119 review. But most of, uh, sometimes, right, you will see uh, that I am a person that not afraid to share about repricing because uh, in unbeatable, uh, you come first. Uh, pun totally intended. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You come first. Yeah, exactly. Come yeah. First, so, you come first. Yeah. Yeah. So what Ethan is saying that he will really advise based on the best situation uh, for yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. when it comes to repricing, the banks don't pay them because you are repricing means you are currently taking this loan from the current bank and you are basically just repricing within the same banks. The banks will not pay Ethan and his team. So generally, if you engage some additional mortgage broker out there, they won't want to 
you will want to you, you want you to do that because they don't get to get paid right at all for their own services mm -hmm. but the thing is for Ethan and their team they just want the best interest for their clients and that's why if repricing is the best model for you they will just ask you to go and reprice right so that they can help you to unlock more cash flow as well right then obviously if they can find better plan uh, from other banks they will also want to share with you so that you can make a better decision for yourself right this is truly professional no broker will ever recommend wow thank you so much michael yeah okay uh can you have ethan's phone so uh joy please make sure you just fill up this form that i just put it inside the link already just now right or you just scan this qr code right because ethan and his team actually work together so it depends on the case by case basis sometimes uh ethan will be the one reaching out to you sometimes it could be his team and all of them are super super capable because they have been in this industry for many many years right so that's why right uh make sure you just fill out the form and they will actually be in touch with you via WhatsApp. They will drop you a text first and then they will actually schedule a call with you. So um, yeah, I think that is the best way. Okay, so very good. Thank you. Okay, my OCBC bank will automatically give me good interest when about to expire the tie up. Okay, so um, Ethan, what's your uh, uh, comments on Mui Mui's uh, comment? Okay, Mui Mui, I understand. OCBC is one of uh, the banks that will actually give you good rates. However, right, if you're looking at 10 banks, right, they are already competing with each other for their refinancing rate. Refinancing, everybody is trying to outdo each other. One person give 2.8, the other fella give 2.75. Then the other fella come and give 2.7, which is why we are here today. Um, for OCBC, sometimes they do give decent rates and sometimes they don't give decent rates. It is always good for you to come and then Find out what is better for you. And even if OCBC offer you rate, right? OCBC will offer you one fixed rate and one floating rate. I know that it, it there's a lot of um analysis paralysis. Not sure whether what should I take, whether I should take the fixed rate at this point in time where interest rate coming down or whether I should take the floating rate right now, uh, pay the higher premium uh, as of today because not a lot of people will see the breakdown or what. They will see today, Sora, Plus the amount, then they say, oh, wow, $22,000, which is a very huge amount. But after you break it down, right, and then you understand they are actually quite similar. So what I do, right, is I actually break down for your for you based on the summary of economic projections and my numbers that I convert to uh, Sora numbers and try our best to get you the cheapest rate possible. Uh, then from there, uh, everybody get rich together and... I'll do this business forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think uh, coming from like just as an investor, right, it's always good to get different data points, right? So as much as we know that uh, OCBC has been, for example, serving you for longest time and you always believe that this is the best plan, but have you compared with others, right? So if you never compare, you never know, right? You They might claim that this is the best, but they could be some other better options out there. You just need to make sure you go and look around. And that's why personally, if you go to individual banks to look around, firstly, it's very time consuming. And secondly, they may not give you the best rate. Right, because banks usually don't give uh like that, right? But if you engage with Ethan and their team, they have connection with all the banks, and the banks really give them the best rate possible. That's how you can really compare different options for you in a much quicker time, and then at the same time you get uh Ethan's and their professional advice to help you what is the best way. If OCBC is still the best after all the analysis, by all means go with your current OCBC, right? Just reprice with them, then they will. They, they will be happily serving you in this case. But if they can find better solutions for you, then you can see whether is it something that, hey, you might want to consider as well. Okay? So at the same time, okay, Binos is saying unable to reprise any tips. So that's why uh, Binos just scan this. And mm. I think they will be able to see your case-to-case -case basis and give you the best advice. Binos, how come unable to ask for repricing? Is it the mortgage very low already? Uh, because if you left like 100k, 200k, maybe like 250k for private properties, right? Uh, they may not be giving you favorable rates. So uh, sometimes, sometimes, oh, you are not Singaporean. 
you are not Singaporean, do you have a Singapore property? Uh, if you have, then we will have a bit more to talk about. Lah. If you don't have a Singapore property and you like to uh, talk to me about strategies on how you can live in Singapore, uh, without paying additional buyer stamp duty, you can do some cash flow manipulation stuff, which we can go in the portfolio planning session. If you were to sign up, okay, there's a lot of interesting things. You can buy like commercial property, let the cash flow pay for your mortgage, pay for your rental and whatsoever. Don't need to pay the 60%. Um, yeah, quite a lot of uh interesting things that we can talk about that are um more strategic. cannot be recorded more, right now. Yes. No, just not cannot record like it's um like you know you're one person. I don't want to hold up hundred I, yeah, one people for, <laughs> for so long. So yeah, uh do do reach out, we'll say hi and then let's talk. Mm. Okay. And then uh, at the same time, uh, Katie is asking, what is the minimum amount uh, for refinancing? For HDB, 150 to 200. Okay, 150 got to uh, ask us a little bit. For private property, about 300K. So um, if you're below these numbers, right, for private property, you can do a uh, gear up and then um, increase the number. For HDBs, right, sometimes uh, if you look at it, right, and the... Uh, and the interest rates are going to be above 2.5 or going to be near 2.5-ish, right? Then you have enough CPF, OA, and cash towards the end of your um, mortgage, right? So you pay finish like 22 years or 20 years already out of 25 or 30 years. The last part, right, what I suggest is a total clear off. So you, you wait until you have 100 or 200K left and prepare 100 or 200K inside your CPF, OA, and your bank account. And then you just clear everything. And uh, when you clear everything, you are now mortgage free. Then uh, you own your property, and you don't have to worry about mortgages anymore. Mm, yeah. Mm. Okay. Very good. So, uh, yeah. So, KD, if you are uh, wondering what should you do, then you can also just scan this code and get get to talk to Ethan and his team for better clarity as well. Okay. So gear up and all this. Uh, I'm not familiar, but they are very familiar with this. Okay. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <laughs> okay, so any additional questions? Any additional questions regarding property and all this before we wrap up? Wow, it's almost 10 o'clock. Oh, awesome, awesome. Okay, <laughs> so how many of you learned a lot from Ethan today? If you learned a lot, can you type learned in the chat? Okay. Hey, Ethan, from the way you present yourself, your business will surely oh, grow. Thank you. La. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so very much. My business recently, five-year-old birthday also. Who you? Uh, I think it's like <laughs> from you, I think you. what Michael can sense is like you really have the best interest for your clients, and that's why he believes with your you know sincerity and your willingness to help more clients will automatically come and even just refer people, right? That's how I somehow right like that's how I'm helping Ethan to promote his service because he has really served me well. So thank you. Uh, I think this year I need to look to talk to you again because it's been one year. Yes. <laughs> Let's do. All right. Awesome. Learned a lot. Very good. Wow. Thank you very much, everybody. Fantastic. And then last but not least, for those who have already scanned this QR code, fantastic. Ethan and his team will uh, get in touch with you, I think, within the next one to two days. Just be patient a little bit and then jump on the call with them to find out what is the best solution for you. In the meantime, this weekend on Saturday, right, 10 a.m., I'm also holding holding my own investing masterclass. So if you want to come and learn about investing, how to exact, exactly use options to increase your return even further, and how to you actually just use in a very no-brainer way to invest, worry-free, very, very zen, and all this, right? If this is the lifestyle that you want, right, then uh, make sure also join my uh, masterclass. If you have attended before, uh, yeah, I I think it's up to you whether you want to re-attend, but I think actually at the end of this weekend masterclass, there will be some additional bonuses that I have not shared before. So you will definitely be delighted to know, okay, if you have attended before, right? So, but for those who are already inside my private community, you don't have to because you're already having the best resources as well, okay? So all you need to do is to scan this QR code, join my free two-hour masterclass to come here and learn even more. And we will be doing live and then I will be going through some option strategy as well to help you to unlock more cash flow okay if cash flow is what you're looking for right so that's it oh okay fantastic pp is even uh wishing you happy birthday wow fantastic okay thank you, thank you everybody, thank you, everybody.
Thank you, thank you. Awesome. Okay, so without further ado, I'm just going to take a photo with Ethan and uh, then let's wrap it up. Thank you. Okay, let's arigato. Three, two, one. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, thank you everybody and see you guys. Okay, have a great, great night and I will see you guys in this on this Saturday for those who are coming. Okay, see you. Arigato. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you all.